Jesus, we come into your presence today. Move in our midst. Speak to us, we pray. I want to be close, close to your side. So heaven is real and death is alive. I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one.
Uh, that song was just a great reminder of who we're here to worship and who we're here to hear from. Amen. He is the great I am today. Amen. It's great to see you for worship. If you're visiting with us today, we're so glad you've come our way. And uh, we want to try to do a good job of making you feel welcome. I'm a little out of breath. Uh, this is a whole lot like work sometimes. Uh, but man, what a great day. We want to do a good job of making you feel welcome if you're visiting with us. If you could help us with that, there's a tear-off section on the um, worship guide. If you'll just fill that out, and then after the service, there's a, there's a welcome kiosk right outside the door there. Some really nice people. They're, wanting, they're going to give you a gift when you bring that to them. And uh, then our pastor and his wife will be uh, out in the lobby as well after the service. We'd love to say hello and uh, to make you feel welcome. Learn your name and see how we can help you in your journey of faith. Right now, we want to be sure that everybody feels welcome. So turn around, say hello to those folks around you, and uh, let's continue to worship the Lord together.
Yeah. Today, you're going to be able to say that I was there when history was made. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you, what's going to happen ain't never happened here before. And may not again, I may not have a job after church. But anyhow, uh, we're going to have a great day. Uh, I'm excited about sharing, and uh, our worship has been wonderful. And, uh, and so now it's time to give, and as we just focus on all that God has blessed us with and all that God has done for us and all He's provided us with, we are truly blessed. And so we come to God as cheerful givers today. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for the opportunity we have today to be able to, to just give. And Lord, we give because we want the gospel to go into the into the world. We want to be a part of that. We want to give because we're grateful, because we're obedient, because we're thankful. And so, Lord, we, we just thank you for the opportunities that, that we have to give back. You've given us so much, and we pray you'll bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Killing you, isn't it? <laughs> what is he doing? There is a method to the madness today, and um, we're gonna we're gonna jump right in. Um, if you brought a Bible with you, turn back to John chapter fourteen. You remember last week uh, we began the whole subject of the Holy Spirit, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we talked last week about the fact that the Holy Spirit was a person. Uh, it's not Casper the Friendly Ghost. It's, it, he's a person. And uh, we said some things about his personhood. We said he was a real person. That he is a unique person. What was the third one? Anybody got your notes? Do what? He's a divine person. He's God, right? He's God. He's a divine. He's a divine person. And so we kind of broke that down last week. And, and so this week what we want to do is, last week what we did is we built a skeleton, okay? And so today what we're going to do, we're going to come and we're going to hang the meat on the skeleton and we're going to, we're going to talk about the fact that not only is he a person, but the Holy Spirit enables he enables us. The Holy Spirit is an enabler. And um, we look at this text, and um, he's an enabler. He enables us. And, and so when he indwells the life of a believer, he enables us to be what God wants us to be and to actually flesh out and do what God wants us to do. And so Jesus is about to tell his disciples something very critical in John chapter 15, verse 5. 
He makes this statement, apart from me, you can do nothing. Emphatic. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And, and so it's almost a blanket statement of inability without the divine enabling made by what Jesus had talked about in John chapter 14, even more critical. In other words, uh, there would be no effective ministry. There would be no life that pleased God by our mere human effort. And, you know, a lot of us has talked about that. No matter how many times we say to ourselves, this time I'm going to do it. You ever been there? <laughs> You know that God wants you to do something and you don't do it and, 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 and then the opportunity comes back and, and, and you begin to say, well, I'll tell you what, this time I'm going to do it. This time I'm, gonna, I'm going to follow through. I'm going to be what God wants me to be. And so if we, if we discover our own spiritual insufficiency, when we come to the place of realizing, you know what, spiritually, I'm just bankrupt. <laughs> spiritually, I am unable. We set ourselves up to be a perfect candidate for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so, if you've not discovered that yet, that you are spiritually bankrupt, that you are spiritually in, uh, insufficient, you're a great candidate for spiritual disaster. So, what, how does he enable us? Well, number one is this. He enables us because he makes us like Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He, he, he makes us like Jesus. Now, Jesus' task on, on the night was to convince his fearful, confused followers that this enabler that he was sending was just like him. And and that believe it or not, what he was saying to them is, look, when he comes, he will do far greater things than I ever accomplished while I was here. And so Jesus said, I, I'm leaving you now, but, but I'm going to send someone who is always going to be there for you no matter what you come up against. This enabler, this helper is going to be there for you and be there with you. We call that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. In other words, when a believer comes to Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our life, right? And, and we, all of a sudden, He becomes this helper to us. Now, I want you to listen to what I'm about to say closely. If you are a believer, the best help you have for whatever problem you face is inside you rather than outside you. But where do we go? Where do we go? We got a problem. We got a crisis. We got this. We got that. Where do we go a lot of times? We go outside of us, don't we? We pick up the phone. We call our counselor. We pick up the phone. We call our mentor. We pick up the phone. We call our friend. We call our parents. We call our brother, our sister. We call somebody and we say, hey, I've got a crisis. I've got a problem. I've got an issue. I mean, what am I going to do? Give me your wisdom here. But the greatest help that you have whenever difficulties arise, the greatest help for you is inside you rather than outside you. And you see, if you had a problem and Jesus were physically here, I mean, who would you go to for the problem? You're going to go to Jesus or me? Well, that's not even close, is it? I mean, Jesus is here, you're, going to, you're coming to me, right? No. I mean, if Jesus is here, you're coming to Jesus. I'm not going to talk to Lee. I'm not going to talk to him. I mean, why would I talk to him when I can talk to Jesus? Why would I go to him when I can go to Jesus? And so, I don't think there's any debate that if Jesus were here on the earth and told us to come to him, that, that we would go to him first. Well, Jesus is not here in the person, but he left us another one just like him. 
And if you're a believer, this enabler is closer to you than anybody else could ever be. You know why he's closer to you than anybody else would ever be? Because he's inside of you. And one of the fundamental reasons that, that Christianity today is struggling and that Christians today struggle is that they don't get the help that they need when they're afraid or when they're lonely or, or they need encouragement or whatever it is. They go to the wrong person in the first place. And in case you don't know this, uh, let, me, let me underline something for you. Now, this is going to be a shocker. Probably want to put this on Facebook. I am not the Holy Spirit. Shocks you, doesn't it? Just totally unseated you. I'm not the Holy Spirit. I mean, as, as your pastor, I'm not the Holy Spirit. And if you're more dependent on people than you are the Holy Spirit, what you do is you settle for second best. But you know, as humans, it's just not easy, is it? It's not easy because the Bible is very explicit in what it tells us. As humans, a lot of times we find ourselves struggling in our Christian faith. And when I pick up my Bible, I hear Jesus say, just put on my, oak, my yoke. If you'll put my yoke on, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You read in the Bible says, for those of us that wait on the Lord, we will mount up with wings like eagles. We will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. I, I go on and, and, and I read and it says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. It's hard to. And so we find ourselves in this conflict. We find ourselves in a struggle. We find ourselves at a place to where we, 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 we have difficulty getting our, our arms around our Christian faith. And a lot of times what ends up happening is, is this. These kind of represent us. Paul, made, Paul makes a statement. He said, I press towards the mark. I press towards the prize. I press towards the upward call of Christ Jesus in my life. And so as a believer, my goal is Jesus, right? Be like Jesus, think like Jesus, act like Jesus, minister like Jesus, respond like Jesus, love like Jesus. All of that is, we, we understand that those are commands that are in the Scripture, but when we live our life, it's like this battle is going on. And so, Jesus. This right here is Jesus. And so, a lot of times as Christians, we say, well, I'm trying. I'm trying to get to Jesus. I'm supposed to respond like Jesus. I'm supposed to love people like Jesus loved people, but I just... And it's like we're trying to hit the mark, but we just, we can't get there. It just seems that we can't get there. We say, I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to be who I need to be this time. I'm going to respond like I need to respond this time. This time is going to be different. And we try and we try and we try and we fall short and we become frustrated and we become defeated and we become spiritually depressed and it creates apathy in our life. And then we just throw up our hands and say, what's the use in even trying anymore? I mean, I can't be like Jesus. I got too much shepherd in me. I can't love like Jesus. I got too much of my grandparents in me. I mean, it's in my DNA. It's in, a, it's in my flesh. And, and you don't understand when that switch goes off. I mean, I'm everything but Jesus. Y'all are laughing because you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
And so here we are. I mean, we spend our life and we read scripture and we've been to Bible studies and we've been to revivals and we've watched online seminars and we've read books and here we are, our whole Christian faith, we're sitting back here and we're just, we're just, we're exhausted. Can't get there. I just can't get there. I can't be Jesus. I can't respond like Jesus. I can't love like Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he understood something. He understood that in our human flesh we were insufficient. He understood that we didn't have the capacity to love like he did. He understood that we didn't have the capacity to minister like he did. I mean, he understood all of that. He understood the, the workings of man. And so Jesus begins to think and ask God, he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send a helper. I'm going to send a helper that is going to get them to, to, to be like me, to love like me, to respond like me, and, and, and to be able to rejoice in the midst of various trials and, and to count it all joy when we fall into, in, in, into temptation and trials and things like that. And so I'm sending a helper. And so we got a helper. <laughs> Told you it ain't never happened before. So we got a helper. Jesus is the mark, right? And so we have a helper. And Jesus understood this. He said, if, if they can just come to the place to where they realize that, that they're indwelled by the power of the Holy Spirit and that all they have to do is to release the power of the Holy Spirit in their life. And when they release the power of the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden, the burden becomes light. All of a sudden, we're able to mount up with wings like eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint. All of a sudden, we can rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice even when things are going haywire and things are coming un undone and, and, and there are issues in our life. We can still say, you know, in all of my days, in all of my ways... I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. You know, I was glad, the other day I was reading Scripture and uh, the psalmist says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. And I got to thinking about that. And I said, you know, a lot of Christians come to ch church and they're here on Sundays and they just kind of, But the psalmist says, when you get to talking about going to the house of the Lord in worship, all of a sudden he gets excited. Do you get more excited about going to Athens and watching Georgia play Tennessee? Or do you get more excited about coming to the house of God and worshiping the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the sovereign God of the universe? And so... All we have to do is release. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Paul, you're safe, buddy. Yes, I am. And so the moment we become a Christian, what are y'all running from? The moment we become a Christian, God gives us this helper. And this helper is a powerful helper. I mean, there's power here. And so what I have to do is I have, the moment I become a Christian, I become connected to the power source. Greater is he that is in me than he that is where? 
in the world. The resurrection power of Jesus is made available to us. Do you realize that song? I mean, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and you and you and me. And so anyhow, oh, he gets situated. Jesus is the bullseye, right? So, let me look and see if I can see him. Well, yeah, I've got him. I got the bullseye. My eye's on the bullseye. My eye is on Jesus. So, we gotta, so what do we got to do? We just got to release. That's it. In case you didn't say I hit the bullseye. <laughs> and so all I got to do is just release. I mean, do you... Do you see the difference in that and that? That effortless. No effort. Straight to Jesus. It's just like that. All we have to do is to release what is within us. Just turn it loose. Say, God, the same power that raised you from the dead is inside of me. And so today, Father, I begin my day and I release the power of the Holy Spirit to do the work through me today that needs to be done. I know what some of you are thinking. Well, you're a pro. You kill animals. And then you stuff their heads and stick them on the wall in your office. <laughs> Somebody told me one time, said, well, you know, people may not like these dead animals in your office. I said, they don't have to come in my office. <laughs> so, I need a helper. I need, and I'm going to get a girl. Come here, Natalie. Come here. Turn around. Isn't she beautiful? Everybody say, hello, Natalie. Yeah. All right, come on, Natalie. Come over here with me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to show you. It, it, it's easy. It's, it's idiot-proof. I mean... Rob, Rob did it first, th first try today. He never shot one, so. But, so Natalie, Natalie, have you ever shot one of these things before today? No. She's never shot one of these things before today. Okay? So we've harnessed the power, right? Power's harnessed. Submitted ourselves to the power. Let's see. Let's see if that's too high for you. You can tell me. I'll move it. Okay, Natalie. Is that too high or is that about right? A little higher. A little higher. How's that? That too high? That's good. That's good. All right, you got your eye on the bullseye? Yes, sir. Now, all you got to do is just release it. Great job. Hey! I mean, do you see the point? I mean, it's just effortless. Just no effort. No effort. I mean, all you got to do is just get your eyes on Jesus and just release the power that is already within you. I mean, it's all you got to do. And I mean, we make all kinds of excuses. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not a pastor. God says, so you're probably better off not being a pastor. 
well, I, I, you know, I don't know much of the Bible. God says, I really don't care how much of the Bible you know what I'm concerned about and, and what, I, what I want you to get your arms around is this. That if you will submit your life to Christ and release the power that is inside of you, my helper, my enabler will come alongside of you and he will use you to shake the world at its foundation for Christ. Yeah. Fishermen, tax collectors, Zealots got empowered by the person of the Holy Spirit. Their life was transformed. And in the book of Acts, it says, these guys have turned the world upside down for Christ. So you see, you, you try to solve your problems without assistance without help you got two choices you can keep you can keep doing this and you're never going to get there you're never going to get there you know what it's like it's like breaking your leg and putting Bengay on it It uh, might make you feel a little bit better, but the bone doesn't mend. The bone is not going to be fixed. Ben Gay doesn't do it. It can't fix the broken bone. You, you got to have another helper that's like Jesus. And someone who, this is what you need. You need somebody with you during the week. Because the truth of the matter is, a lot of people that come to church, all they come to church for is a Ben Gay rub. Just make me feel a little bit better. Just make me feel a little bit better. And if I feel better, I'll be fine and I'll come back next Sunday and I'll be beat up again and hopefully next Sunday I'll get another Bengay rub. But that's not what Christ intended. Christ never intended that. Christ intended something to happen in our life and he sends the Holy Spirit to enable us and, and he intends that to have someone who is with us at Monday, at work, at Tuesday, at home, at Wednesday in the neighborhood. For the rest of the week, we need someone with us who will be wherever we go. And we have that someone who's the Holy Spirit. Which is this. He's always with me. The Holy Spirit is always with us. Do you realize that if Jesus were on the earth today, that we would actually be worse off as people? Because if Jesus were on the earth today in his bodily presence, most of us would be defeated and disseminated people. You want to know why? I mean, why did Jesus tell his disciples it was better for him to leave and for the Holy Spirit to come? Because when Jesus was on the earth, he was encased. His deity was encased in humanity. Paul told us in Philippians 2 that he emptied himself and he took on the form of a servant and he poured his deity into the location of his humanity. And the result was that even though Jesus is God, he could only be in one place at one time. Uh, his deity was always in the vicinity of his humanity. And so when you look at his life, he never traveled more than a few miles. He never preached but just to a few thousand people. And that's why Jesus says when the enabler comes, the helper comes, the Holy Spirit comes, that he will do greater things than I. Now think about it. In my ministry, I've preached to more people than Jesus ever preached to. I've traveled further than Jesus ever traveled. Now obviously, I, I haven't done greater works than Jesus did in that sense, but, but 
I haven't turned water into wine. I haven't raised anyone from the dead. I mean, nothing like that has happened. But the point is that the moment we say yes to a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we are indwelled with the Holy Spirit. So what does that mean? It means that when we finish this morning, now this gets exciting. When we finish this morning, we're fixing to scatter. How many of you live in Bibb County? Raise your hand. How many of you live in Monroe County? Raise your hand. How many of you live in Jones County? Raise your hand. Crawford County. Anybody Crawford County? We used to have Crawford. Twiggs? Twiggs County. Any other counties I didn't mention? Where? Baldwin County. Houston County. I mean, think about it. When we finish this morning, we're going to get into our cars and we're going to scatter into a half a dozen counties in central Georgia. And guess who goes with us? <laughs> the Holy Spirit of God. Now, what happens if the, if the Bibb County people this week say, you know what, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me, and I'm going to release that spirit this week in my life, at work, at home, at school, in the grocery store, in the neighborhood, wherever I go, God, I surrender all, I'm all surrendered to you. I can tell you, an impact for the kingdom will be made. The same thing in Monroe, in Jones, in, in Houston, in, in Twiggs, in Baldwin counties, I mean, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. But you see, some of us would rather believe a lie from the darkest, deepest pit of hell than believe the promise that God has given us. And the devil says, you ain't going to do nothing. You can't make an impact. You're not going to make a difference. And so there's no use in you even trying. And so even though we're indwelled here in Macon, the Holy Spirit is not limited to location. Today in Korea, the Spirit of God is there. Today in China, the Spirit of God is there. In Africa, the Spirit of God is there. And all of those people that have claimed the name of Christ, they have been filled with the same Spirit and they have been enabled to live a victorious life. And so why are we perpetually defeated? You say, well, I just don't have as much of the Spirit as so-and-so does. When you're saved, God gives all that you need. It's not that we have less of the Spirit. It's that the Spirit has less of us. If you've got a real estate problem and you call a law firm because you've got a real estate problem, it really doesn't matter that people in that firm specialize in tax cases or civil cases or criminal cases. When you call with a real estate issue, you want to talk to the expert, right, in real estate law. And so you make the phone call and, and your call gets transferred to the right expert and, and the real estate problem gets taken care of. You see, the, you may be dealing with, with one person in the firm, but you've got the influence and the power of the entire firm behind you. You realize that as believers, there's a law firm in glory called the Godhead. And when you call, it's God, God, and God that's there. And when you call, you, you talk to the expert. Each person has a sphere of responsibility. God the Father oversees the plan for your life. He has ordered your steps. He has numbered our days. God the Son develops the plan in our life. And God the Holy Spirit implements the plan in our life. And so all we got to do is just come to God. 
All we have to do is to release because God's given us a helper. God knows you can't carry the burden. God knows you can't handle the load. He knows that you can't be what you are commanded to be when you read your Bible. He knew all that when he inspired it. You say, well, it's just not fair. No. God gave us a helper. And it's called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes alongside us just like I stood by Natalie. He's there. There's safety, there's security there. There's instruction there. And all we have to do is to release the power that has indwelled us. Father, today we come and we, we struggle and we try and we work and we toil and it's exhausting, it's frustrating. It's spiritually debilitating. God, bring us to the point to where we believe what you've told us, that we have a helper, that he is our very present help in our time of need. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. In just a moment, we're going to have a song. Are you walking in defeat or are you walking in victory? If you belong to God, you don't have to stay in defeat. Will you hear what God's telling you today? There is a power within you because you're mine that can lift you out of it. Maybe you want to come and, and you just want to pray this morning. So we stand and sing in just a moment. You can come and you can come to this altar. You can pray. Or maybe you want someone to pray with you. Or maybe you want this power that we've talked about today. And you don't have it because you've never given your life to Christ. Or you have questions about church membership. Or you just need to talk to somebody. We stand and sing. Maybe you want to just slip out the back doors, turn left down the hallway. There's a room down there, uh, folks standing in the hallway waiting. And they're not going to judge you. They're going to pray for you, pray with you, answer your questions, listen to you. Father, today, I pray that your spirit moves in our lives. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand.
declare today, church? I lift my eyes up. My help comes from the Lord. I lift my eyes up. My help comes from the Lord. From the Amen. God.